Okay, and welcome back students who are taking financial accounting. And in this series of videos, we were working on the theory for chapter 12, which is financial statement analysis. The reason why I say were is because this is the last video as far as theory is concerned. Um, and it is the focus on decision making, right? So let me grab my pen here. All right, so the two ratios here um, for this chapter are about dividend yield and price to, price earnings ratio, the PE ratio. All right, so the dividend yield is the dividends per share. All right, um, so if the company had a dividend per share of say, you know, one, all right, and we're dividing it by the current market price per share of stock. So if the current market price is a hundred dollars, right, that's you know the price of the stock. One divided by 100 means we have a dividend yield of 0.01, right, which is equal to 1%, right, move the decimal over two places, 1%, right. So um, the yield on the dividend, if you, dividend yield, you think about it from this perspective. What's my dividend and the word yield in relation to the price of the stock? So you know, how is uh, that dividend, what's the relationship between the, the dividend price and the price of the stock, that being the yield. At least that's how I mentally try to keep track of it in my head there, okay? Remember, I don't memorize the formulas. If I need a, you know, a formula and I don't remember it, I can just quickly open up the book and, um, you know, find a page or do a search on the internet in order to uh, find the formula for that particular ratio, but it does help um, to have some kind of conceptual knowledge of what that uh, ratio is trying to accomplish. Right now, the big one here, and it's the last one, is the PE ratio. The PE ratio is the current price per share. Let's say it's a hundred dollars, and my current earnings per share. All right now, current EPS is earnings. Per share, and you've um, we've actually covered the earnings per share in a previous uh, focus on decision making, so I'm not going to go over it again. But basically, it's your earnings divided by shares. So if your earnings are say 100,000, and your shares are 500,000 shares, okay, um, 100,000 divided by 500,000 means your earnings per share is 0 0.2, right? Your earnings divided by the number of shares. That's your current EPS. So if I have 0 0.2, I'm taking my current price of the per share is 100, right? And my EPS is uh, 0 0.2. 100 divided by 0 0.2 is 500. Okay? Now, um, I was just making these numbers up as I was going along here. Um, but this here, from an investment perspective, a lot of people pay close attention to this P-E ratio. Why? Because they're looking at, you know, notice the components here. We have the price of the stock, we have the earnings of the stock, and we have the shares of stock. Those three components are make up, you know, are part of this earnings, and the, the P-E ratio. So... As a quick down and dirty, a lot of you know, the higher the PE ratio, the less you want to invest in the stock, all right, because it says the price of that stock is overvalued. In this case, here, a hundred dollar price, but the earnings is per share is only 0 0.2 and has a PE ratio of 500. That's way too high, okay. Um, actually, um, in theory, or a while ago, um, the general kind of rule said that the P.E. ratio, um, you want to invest in companies obviously with a low P.E. ratio. So let's say the earnings per share, let me erase some of this here. Let's say the earnings per share still was 0 0.2, but the price of the stock was a $10 stock. Okay, so now your P.E. ratio is only 50, all right? Well, even that is way too high. OK, um, most businesses want, you know, most investors would just take a quick look and they want P ratios of 20 or less. All right. 
um, before they even consider because the price would be very, very low. Um, and therefore they get more bang for the buck. I mean, if you have a hundred thousand, you know, say a thousand dollars, um, to invest in a stock and the price is a hundred dollars, you're only able to get 10 shares of stock. But if the price of the stock is $1, right now, you're able to get a thousand shares. All right. And is that it's easier for a $1 stock to go up than it is for a hundred dollars stock to go up. Okay. I mean, if the, you know, think about it. If um, is it for a dollar stock to go to a dollar fifty, which is a fifty percent increase, right? Right. Well, a hundred dollar share stock has to go to one hundred and fifty dollars, the same fifty percent uh, increase. All right. Um, it is much easier to go from a dollar to a dollar fifty than it is to go from a hundred to one hundred and fifty, and you're going to have more shares. So um, the business investors kind of want a low. Uh, price to earnings ratio. Now, how low is low? At one time, like I said, it was like they were looking at $20 or less. Okay, but today, in today's environment, um, that rule of thumb doesn't really hold true as much anymore. Yes, uh, investors still look at PE ratios, but it all depends upon the industry itself. I mean, when um, you know, you have to look at not, you know, you can't look at just the company. Okay, you actually have to look at the sector and the industries in order to have a better idea what is a good and what is a low, a uh, high and what is a low PE ratio, right? Um, you know, uh, a low PE ratio might be 30, all right, for a particular sector, okay? And another one, it might be 50. Why? Because you have, you know, um, like, for example, Apple and Google and those, their P.E. ratios are closer to 100, okay? Um, you know, can you afford a $600 stock? You know, do you want to invest in a $600 stock, right? Um, that's, you know, for personal uh, personal choice, right? But just realize that the P.E. ratio in and of itself is a key metric as far as uh, investing in a stock. It's not by any means an end-all, be-all. But it does give a general, you know, at a quick glance, and that's what most people use it for, at a quick glance, they look at that P-E ratio, and if it seems low in comparison to other, uh, other you know, companies, then uh, investors will then say, okay, I'll look at this, this particular company versus another, you know, um, for the simple reason, you know, the, the current price, okay, remember, a high price, you know, keeping the earnings per share are the same, the higher the price, the higher the P.E. ratio, the lower the price, uh, the lower the P.E. ratio. And if I want to invest, I want to invest in a stock that's more likely, has more room to go up um, because, you know, I think about it like this, Berkshire Hathaway, right? If you don't know what Berkshire Hathaway is, that is um, the company that Warren Buffett owns, right, or uses as his investment vehicle, all right. Now, he has two shares of stock. I think it's BRKA. I think it's BRK. I'm not sure the ticker symbol, um, but I'm just going to call it BRKA and BRKB. So he has two different ones. The A one, the price of each share is like $25,000, you know, <laughs> per share. All right. You know, do you have, you know, twenty five thousand dollars to buy one share of stock? No, but he, they created a B, which would be more along the lines of five hundred dollars a share. OK, um, this allows more people to be able to buy into that particular uh, into Berkshire Hathaway and follow along with Warren Buffett at a more reasonable price than the original um, Berkshire Hathaway at twenty five grand. All right. But even so, a lot of people don't have $500. They're looking at, you know, even $100 a share is high for a lot of people. So that's why you look at the P.E. ratio. If that P.E. ratio is a high number, let's say it's 75, you can almost say that that price is way too high and you don't want to look at that company. But if the um, if the P.E. ratio is, say, down by 25, okay, now you might want to look at that company because that price might be $5, Okay. And that's how you use the P.E. ratio, right? So 
Um, with that said, that's the last of our uh, uh, ratios. Um, and as always, uh, you know, if you don't understand something, you know, feel free to telephone and speak with an instructor. All that we have left is to do the homework problems. And the reality is, is, you know, these should be a walk of the park, but do them again. Okay. Um, for the simple reason, like I said, I see many, you know, some students who come into managerial accounting and they'll get these, they'll, they'll be asked, you know, on exams, these ratios, you know, something about these ratios and they can't do them. They get them wrong, right? And they've already seen them, you know, three times, right? Let alone the fourth time doing it managerial accounting, which is the next subject that you'll take after financial accounting. So, um, with that said, uh, you know, we'll be moving into the homework problems and then we'll be done with the chapter and done with the book. All right. So see you then.